this session we will focus on tcp connection establishment and release so we have already seen the connection management in case of transport layer right using that three way handshaking mechanism and the same technique is used by this tcp also so in case of tcp also connections are established in tcp by means of a three way handshaking mechanism so to establish a connection either side of this uh, connection maybe if you take the case of a server the server passively waits for an incoming connection by executing the listen primitive simply listen whether somebody is requesting for my service like that server will listen it can uh, listen to a particular source by specifying the uh, port, uh, address or something or it can simply listen in general i am ready to serve anybody like that also you can uh, listen on the other side that on the client side the client execute a connect request okay it is requesting for a connection from a server so how it will execute the connect primitive specifying the ip address and port number to which server and which service from that server i should uh, get the service so specifying the ip address and port number it will issue a connect primitive and uh, some other information also will be there in this request maximum tcp segment size it is willing to accept or optionally some other data like passwords and all will be there in the connection request the connect primitive sends the tcp segment with syn bit on and ack bit off and waits for a response so we have already seen these two flags right in the tcp segment syn and ack so in the connect request syn will be 1 but ack will be 0 and the reply back from the server to client both syn and ack will be 1 and when the segments arrive at the destination that is the client issues a connect primitive and that request or that uh, tcp segment arrives at the destination that is at the server the tcp entity though checks to see if there is a process that has done a listen on the port given in the destination port field so the corresponding port which is requested by the client that should be free now right it should execute a listen primitive then only it will provide a service so the tcp entity at the receiver side first check to see if there is a process that has done a listen on the port given in the destination port field if so that means the server process whose uh, port number is specified in the connection request is ready to serve otherwise that means that port number is not listening now it port may be uh, busy with something else Okay, in that case, what happens? It sends a reply by setting a... RST bit as one. You know what is RST, right? Reset. So we have already seen the reset flag in the TCP segment header. It indicates some error or some rejection or some problem. So here also it says that the requested port number is not uh, providing any service now. So connection rejected. That is RST bit. And uh, if not, the second case that is uh, the server process the corresponding port number. is listening currently so it's ready to accept a connection so if some process is listening to the port that process is given the incoming tcp segment in that case this tcp segment will be given to that port and it can either accept or reject the connection again that uh, particular port can decide on whether i should uh, accept this connection or not it can uh, reply accordingly so if it accepts an acknowledgement segment is sent back so this is how it proceeds actually this is host 1 and host 2 so host 1 sending a request the sync syn bit will be set and it will provide a sequence number for the connection and the reply back from the server let us take it host 2 as a server and host 1 as the client so host 1 in case of that syn will be set and ack also will be set ack will be the sequence number of the request plus 1 and it uh, this uh, particular message or segment also will be numbered here the number is y actually okay and uh, for this reply back from the server again another reply from the client to server the sequence number will be next sequence number from the host that is x plus 1 and acknowledgement number is acknowledgement for the uh message or segment received from the host to right that is actually sequence number y so the acknowledgement will be sequence number y plus 1 so this is three way handshaking first 
a request from host 1 to host 2 a reply from host 2 to host 1 again a response for that from the host 1 to host 2 now if two different uh, uh, machines at, the, at both side of a particular connection both uh, if they both try to uh, establish a connection or request for a connection simultaneously what happens so in the event that two hosts simultaneously attempt to establish a connection between the same two sockets no issues are there the result of these two events is that just one connection is established no two because connections are identified by their endpoints so the same endpoints are used by both these uh, connections right so only one will be established so if the first set of results in a connection identified by x y and the second uh, one does two only one table entry is made namely x y so x is the socket corresponding to one machine and y is the socket corresponding to another machine you remember the socket is actually that ip address and port address together right so these two pair will be the same for uh, that particular connection even uh, when both are trying to establish the same connection so only one table entry will be made for that yes. so how a connection can be released so although tcp connections are full duplex that means the same connection can be used for communication both sides to understand how connections are released it is best to think of them as a pair of simplest connection one connection for uh, host 1 to host 2 for communication another separate connection from host 2 to host 1 for communication so each simplest connection is released independently of its sibling that is what is happening that is uh, host 1 if uh, no more data from host 1 to host 2 that particular connection the direction is from host 1 to host 2 only that can be uh, temporarily released or it can be released separately so to release a connection either party can send a tcp segment with fin bit set we already seen that fin flag in a segment header right if it is set means no more data from that side which means that it has no more data to transmit when the bit fin bit is acknowledged that direction is shut down for new data data may continue to flow indefinitely in other in the other direction so only one way will be closed using one connection release request when both directions are have been shut down the connection will be released and their connection will be released only when both sides are ready to terminate the connection so connection release different steps are the four tcp segments are needed to release a connection one fin and one ack for each direction right yeah if uh, host one want to terminate the corresponding connection it will send a uh, segment with fin set and the reply from the host 2 to host 1 giving that uh, ack for the acknowledgement for this pin request again from host 2 to host 1 also the same thing happens one uh, once a pin request has been sent from host to host 1 acknowledgement will be sent back it is possible for the first ack and for the second fin to be contained in the same segment reducing the total count to three that also can be done if uh, both of them want to terminate almost simultaneously that piggybacking can be done just as with telephone calls in which both people say goodbye and hang up the phone simultaneously both ends of a tcp connection may send fin segments at the same time that also possible both can uh, terminate at the same time these are each acknowledged in the usual way and the connection is shut down there is in fact no essential difference between the two hosts releasing sequentially or simultaneously whatever happens these two connections will be released separately even if they are uh, trying to do simultaneously there are two styles of terminating a connection asymmetric release and symmetric release so we have already seen these in case of a transport layer in general right yeah in tcp also both approaches are used asymmetric release is the way the telephone system works when one party hangs up the connection is broken right that is telephone system if one has uh, just cut the phone and your conversation will be stopped but in case of symmetric release symmetric release treats the connection as two separate unidirectional connections and requires each one to be released separately a symmetric release is abrupt and may result in data loss yeah that is if host one uh, want to terminate the connection because it is not having any more data it will just uh, terminate the connection but uh, what about host to host they may host to may have more data to send so data loss will be resulted in that case 
you can see here the problem with an asymmetric relays host 1 and host 2 host 1 establish a connection by requesting for a connection connection request ACK is received back so connection is established so it starts sending data first data is uh, received by host 2 but what about host 2 host 2 don't want to send any data so host 2 simply request for a disconnection disconnection request and it terminates the connection but what about host 1 host 1 still wants to continue with the data transmission the data is getting lost that is the problem with asymmetric release so after the connection 1 is established host 1 sends a segment that arrive properly at host 2 host 1 sends another segment and fortunately host 2 issues a disconnect so the data getting lost so more sophisticated release protocol is needed to avoid data loss right that is one way to avoid such a data losses our symmetric release both the connections should be terminated separately <clears throat> the common protocol used in case of a symmetric release is that host 1 and host 2 will close their connection in an agreement a mutual agreement so host 1 says that i am done are you done too they are asking, asking for the permission and if host 2 responds i am done too goodbye then the connection will be released safely okay but there is a problem in this case that is uh, and that uh, issue that is called two army problem we will see what is two army problem which is a problem in case of a symmetric release if you are using this specific protocol a mutual agreement for uh, connection release now you let us see what is actually two army problem you can see here there is a white army and uh, two groups of uh, blue army here okay and the white army encamped in a valley here on both side of the surrounding hillsides are blue armies here also blue army here here also blue army is there the white army is larger than either of the blue armies alone right yeah here three is there if you take this alone white army is stronger right here also if you take this alone if you take this part alone then also white army is stronger right larger in number but the problem here is that even if the white army is larger than either of the blue armies alone but together the blue armies are larger than white army if we if both together then it will be greater or the stronger than this white army okay so issue is here, issue here is that if either blue army attacks by itself it will be defeated but if the two blue armies attack simultaneously both attack this white army simultaneously who will be victorious definitely blue army will be victorious <coughs> so and how can these two blue armies synchronize their attack only by communication right but on the way there is white army so if uh, even if a blue army one pass a message that may be captured by white army and may be corrupted or it may be lost also right so the channel for communication between this blue army is actually completely unreliable the so question here is that does a protocol exist that allows this blue armies to win that is the question just for example the commander of blue army one sends a message reading i propose we attack at dawn on march 29 how about this is a message from blue army 1 to blue army 2 and the message arrives the commander of blue army 2 agrees and his reply gets safely back to blue army 1 okay without any attack safely the request and the reply reached correctly will the attack happen probably not because the commander 2 that is blue army 2 does not know if his reply got through right so blue army 2 will be in a doubt whether my reply back received whether they will attack at the same time right so they will hesitate to do the attack because if uh, army 1 didn't receive such a reply they won't uh, attack right so it would be foolish uh, for this uh, blue army 2 to charge into a battle yeah, that's the thing here so how this can be solved can we use a three-way handshaking mechanism here also that is the initiator of the original proposal must acknowledge the response that is uh, blue army one will request for an attack first blue army two reply back 
again blue army one say that yeah i have seen your response we can start an attack so do you think that the problem will be solved using this three way handshake mechanism assume that no messages are logged blue blue army 2 will get an acknowledgement but the commander of blue army 1 will now hesitate right why blue army 1 send back a response actually but uh, blue army 1 is not sure whether it received correctly yeah that's a problem so if it is uh, not received by this blue army 2 blue army 2 won't be ready for the attack not true and if did not he knows that the blue army 2 will not attack we would now make a four way handshake protocol but that also does not help either this uh, this problem continues forever there is actually two army problem to see the relevance of two army problem to releasing connection rather than two military affairs this stops to disconnect for attack the same thing happens for any type of communication instead of this attacks if we replace the, the word by disconnect the same thing happens in any communication connection that is if neither side is prepared for dis- disconnect until it is convinced that the other side is prepared for disconnect too the disconnection will never happen as i should in case of tcp this two army problem is uh, solved using a timer so timer if a response to a fin is not forthcoming within two maximum packet lifetime so timer is set with a time which is equal to twice the maximum packet lifetime and if a host request for a disconnection by setting a fin bit in the corresponding segment and it does not receive any reply back within this time or time out period the sender of the fin will simply release the connection okay the other side will eventually notice that nobody seems to be listening to it anymore and it will time out as well other side also if and send some data and all it sees that uh, yeah nothing is happening from the other side i am not receiving any acknowledgement so it will also eventually terminate so even if this solution is not perfect somewhat addresses our two army problem that's about the connection release in tcp thank you